I've been in this union a long time. I've seen a lot of things. A lot of good things, a lot of bad things. When I was service manager at Willard, my boss, who was in Philadelphia, said, go down the hall and get Mickey Lucas and take him down to the agriculture department and see if we can get involved in that. They're going to put that up for a contract, all the service work, which we did. They did, and we got a lot of it to a contractor that wasn't union, but they didn't have men, so we got a lot of it. So I went down the hall and I met Lucas and he said, well, drive with me. So this when we're getting ready to go. He said to Joe Savia, come on with us. I didn't know, I thought, well, that's good. The three of us can talk to the government. So we got there, we went in and saw this guy. And uh, before we did, we got out of the car and uh, Mickey Lucas turned around and told uh, Joe to feed the meat and wait here for us for like two hours. So that was the politics. He asked Joe to come, not to be at the meeting, to make sure he didn't get anything in the office. They worried about him then. Bill Lamb uh, was so worried about Savia making mistakes. He put the financial secretaries and business managers together to one. And then he died when exactly the worst thing happened. And first thing you see, if you look at the bottom um, video in my, on my webpage, with the big chart of the spreadsheet behind me, you'll, you'll see uh, what he did. I mean, he just never didn't raise the dues to get votes, skim the money. Now, I don't know if he did what uh, Bernie Thunberg asked me to do, was to hire guys to uh, keep their benefits alive, to make a month or so, so they kept benefits. And I don't know, but, uh, you know, I heard from a guy I sat with, came in to vote. He said, oh, boy, Joey takes care of me. Uh, and he was paying the guy's dues to get benefits instead of the beneficiaries. So that's part of my, my reason. I mean, it's not like I'm mad at the guy. I'm just saying he's not trustworthy. And we're still got that guy on our minds and we still have the family in the union. Uh, and then I came up and asked Chris Medella when he had the little contractors meeting. And I said, well, why aren't we taking care of the beneficiaries? And uh, Chris said, cause the lawyer said I don't have to pay him. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. I thought, my God, what happened to your brain? The members come first. And if you gotta ask the lawyers, who are you looking out for? So maybe he didn't ask the lawyers because that friend Elmore, he talks about asking the lawyers all the time and he doesn't ask them, but he said that. So then I showed him the spreadsheet that you're gonna see on the on the bottom uh, thing of my webpage and then he realized, damn, you found it. And you know, it's all his information. Some of it's out of the journal, that's we know every death and the others on the uh, report that, w that uh, the guys filed to the Labor Department. So it was pretty easy once I set it up. I just had to count everybody and see what we actually paid and see what we were supposed to pay based on the number of members in the union and times three dollars. And it came out, you know, 1717 and 573 bucks. That, that we've skimmed for what is keep this guy in office. Didn't raise the dues uh, for seven years. One year he raised to 57, and then he didn't raise it. Still 57 the next year. And for the next five, it's 63, 63, 63, 63, 63. And things were going up. And now how are you going to, how are you going to meet ends? Take the money off the, from the death benefits. And I got, I caught him, and they did everything in the world to, to say, you're wrong. Well, then when they found out, uh, uh, Chris said, oh my God, to himself, not to me. And he deleted an eighth of our century of things that showed anybody could go in there and see exactly how many, uh, my, how much money we underpaid. And, and it was systematic. Every month was the same, two to $3,000 per member, adding up to $717,000. 573. So I thought, okay, 
I got my journal in the mail and it said, uh, first reading they had for the uh, new uh, business agent. I said, well, okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. So I went out to see what's going on and I realized, you know, when I looked at the Labor Department reports, and I know them pretty well because I get calls about stuff. And uh, in there, it's, it says dues and, and um, fringes or dues and uh, fees, you don't have to report to the Labor Department. But anything else, you do. So every time we get a raise, it's, it's not it's part of the deal. We don't have to report that. But when you make a change uh, and like this from adding a, a business, assistant business manager, and really, originally, it was the assistant business manager did this in Article 3. And then it turned out that was changed, uh, and I don't know when by or by who, but it became the business manager. So that was one change we didn't report. And then the next change was add a business agent. We had one, so we, then it came two. And then the next year, right before the election, we added another one, so we three. And the next year, another one, four. The next year, another one, five. And this year, another one, six. And what kind of makes me uh, wonder is I, I told Chris, I said, you know, send it down. They're not going to penalize you. Just send it down. You can, you can make it right. And, you know, during that, you, the, if you were at the meeting, you heard him say, oh, I'll, I'll talk to the lawyers. Well, I gave him a voicemail what the Department of Labor told me. So he's, he's pulling shenanigans. I mean, you know, Chris is a good guy, but he's going to do anything to hold on to that job. I mean, anything. He's not going to tell the truth. That's what he's going to do. And I, I'd hate to see it because I've always admired that family. But here I am. And I want to win this. Number one, I'm healthy. I don't have any heart, lung into that. Uh, if I walk every day, I don't have to take any pills. If I don't walk, i got to take a 0.5 milligram of uh, blood pressure and, and the smallest amount of uh, cholesterol. So, you know, pretty much like everybody on that, we eat too much sweets and don't exercise enough. So, don't worry about my health. I worry about it when I go in there. Those little guys are so mad at me. I mean, what's that all about? You know, I don't, I just think it's funny. Uh, until they hit me in the head, maybe I don't think it's so funny. But uh, that three vote thing was was pretty uh, pretty awful. Between the nominations and the actual union meeting, it was a little law, and I went up and uh, Ray Black was up there and John Sullivan was up there, and I said, you know, we didn't read uh, the we never read but the second and third because I was waiting for that. I, I saw the first one on the journal from my home, and the second I got up there and I mentioned a. I talked a little bit, and Chris said he's going to check with the lawyers. And I, I said, "Do you want to? You want to hear the message?" They said, "No." I said, "Out on the floor. Maybe you remember." Uh, and so on. Uh, he did. He did that. The next month, they, you know, second thing, gavel about not reading it. So if you look at my platform, I'm going to have. I think we have to start living by what we put in our bylaws. And I think one way to do this, have the president read it and have a member read the same thing at the same time. You know, one of the guys from the floor, one of the ladies from the floor, read it so we can definitely get the minutes taken care of. They're being missed. And I knew, uh, I was pretty sure after I ta after I, uh, uh, Tom uh, Gifford gave his uh, Report and he went. I think they went to a school and he's and in the middle of it. And in there, he said, "Yeah, Ray Black went with me." So I, I didn't bring that up last time because it was just not worth his nomination. But uh, I think I think they've been. I think Ray Black and he can tell me for himself has been going out and being paid as a, a unvoting officer now. And of course, he is. Um, Going up. He's been nominated for the sixth place. Uh, I got nothing against Ray. He's a nice guy. But we ought to follow the rules. And John Sullivan knows we ought to follow the rules. I mean, maybe maybe he's sick doing this stuff. I mean, he's, he's done it a long time. And I know he's been whiplashed uh, by Joe Sabby. I'm getting uh, mails from John that, uh, you know, said, you can't do that anymore because uh, 
Uh, John was writing a blog for a while, and he came after him. And yeah, John's been upset. I feel bad for John, really. I like John, but you know, he gets himself in a jam. Uh, picking on me didn't bother me, but it, it bothered me because it it was not about me. It was it was about you guys speaking up. You know, if you look what you know, the Baileys, that dog, a cur, or, you know, all that crap. Third grade shit, but um, that's why I'm here. And uh, you're, you're going to see this video in a few days on the um, on my web page, which is uh, six o two joebailey.com. And I, I go over a lot of stuff, uh, and I, I'm going to be accused of not being a union man because I was a contractor once. <laughs> How that makes any sense, I never know. But uh, I never dropped my book, even when I was a contractor. Next year I get the uh, 60 years. So everybody said, look, I can't be doing this. He's not healthy. Well, you look at all these web pages. I did all those. I, that doing that web page to show you how they got the, I got to the actual amount was pretty cool. You can do a, in case you don't know, you can do a, uh, you can tape, uh, videotape your screenshot and pick a part you want. I picked the whole thing. And you can actually, I loaded up all the years for the LM2 reports. And I went up and down just so you make sure you know I'm not fudging. Uh, it was legit. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I think I can add something to this union. And one thing I can add to this union is bring the, bring the people out there that's young and wants to come out to it. Or maybe the guys that are in their 50s and they, you know, 60s are sharp as hell. And, but their body's not holding up like it should. I mean, damn, I know that happens. Uh, I'm good and my body's got a little backache, but what fitter don't have a backache? You carry six inch pipe. Actually, I found four heavy, four after heavy, the hardest thing to carry. I didn't want to do that twice, but who does? Anyway, I'll just leave it at that and wish everybody well and uh, hope you come by and see me at the nominations. I, I mean, at the, um, at the, uh, before the at the campaign at before the next union meeting and say hi introduce yourself we're glad to see you um, look at that choose candidates that maybe are new uh, we need turnover if you don't get turnover in any government you become autocratic autocratic means one leader forever and we don't need that but it, you know I think the UA has got to start looking at this they they need to get turnover too they they're the old school. And we need to get fresh blood in there. We need to get more women. We need to get some black people on the business managers. We need to be diversified. We are America's union. We are the union of the nation's capital. We mean something. And believe me, this story is big. Big. A union stole money from a dead member, member the minute he died. How big does that get? Union stole money from a member the minute he died to stay in office. So somebody out there, when I'm dead and gone, better be stepping up like I am now or we won't have unions. We'll just have autocrats making up stuff. Anyway, I appreciate you listening to whole, this whole thing. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you at the uh, at the uh, polls 602 Bernie Thurnberg school good to see Bernie lately too wish he could walk better have a good night